Hello there Capricorns, welcome to your December 2019 tarot reading. I hope you all are doing well and um, I hope you're excited about rounding out this year and transitioning into 2020. So, I can't believe it's the end of the year already. Um, first of all, let me just uh, preface this reading by saying that when I was shuffling out the cards, um, I saw like snippets of images, okay? Um, they weren't moving. They weren't like, you know, moving pictures or anything like that. But, um, and, and they're like depictions of random objects, but I feel like there is a common theme in this uh, spread, okay? So for whatever reason, the cards um, kind of chose to split themselves up like this. Okay, this deals more with, um, you know, like the the more tangible stuff in your life, like um, things that are happening in the work front and things like that. And then the bottom seems to be more of the emotional realm relationships. And, and it's just the way the cards choose to divide themselves. But um, let me talk to you about uh, what I saw. And I feel like the month of December is going to start out in a situation where you're waiting for things, you're waiting for things to happen. And then towards like the, the latter part of the month, the end of the month, things are going to culminate, uh, come into fruition. And so I do feel like, you know, the energy for this month and the advice that I can give you is in due time, it's going to work out. It's going to come full circle. It's going to come in for you. Okay. So, um, I guess like don't stress out over it. Don't feel discouraged. Um, push on, okay? It's it's the end of the year. We tend to lose steam or lose momentum, but I do sense that you know whatever it is that you've worked really hard at, and whatever it is that you're you're counting on to come in for you, whatever that energy is, it's going to come to fruition. Okay, so don't fret. Uh, first of all, I saw a magnifying glass right next to a black comb. And so what it's telling me here with that black comb, first of all, it's almost like going through details, sifting through situations, and uh, going through things with a fine-tooth comb. That means looking at everything that's in front of you very, very carefully, figuring out, you know, almost like a scientist, I feel like, you know, in the through the process of like elimination or through the scientific method, whatever it is that you're trying to bring forth into the world and you're trying to figure out, well, I tried this and this is the outcome that I got. I tried this and I got another outcome. I feel like you're trying to consolidate your knowledge. You're trying to go through data, go through information with a fine tooth comb to make sure you have everything in line, to make sure everything is lined up and to make sure that there are no mistakes, there are no errors, there, there are no surprises, okay? I feel like this is heavily in the work sector. I see that you might be in a position where you're reviewing other people's work, for example. You're trying to catch errors. You're trying to, um, I, I see this element of like somebody in your environment, they're, they're a little bit, either a little bit careless, a little bit reckless, or they do things too fast and they're very prone to error, okay? Now, Capricorn, uh, earth signs in general, especially Capricorns, well, earth signs in general. You guys are very, very good at, you know, kind of like um, being the last person to look at the work of somebody else because you're able to catch a lot of mistakes. You guys are very methodical. You have a process to get things done. You have your own uh, processes that you put in place. It's tried and true. And I feel like because of that, you're very meticulous and very methodical. And I, I feel like you're in the best position to do this review work, to, to, to look over the data, to analyze the data, to look over why things are the way that they are. So I see a lot of uh, energies for this month where you're going to have to keep your, your, your eyes very sharp, keep your wits about you, 
and to make sure to pour over, look over, glance over, and going through things to make sure all the numbers add up, to make sure, you know, all the T's are crossed, to make sure that all the I's are dotted. Now, it seems a little bit boring or monotonous, but I do sense that something was like brought out prematurely by another person. Um, and I feel like, you know, on the heels of the Mercury retrograde that we are, I'm doing this in November. So on the heels of the November Mercury retrograde, there have been a lot of mistakes. There have been a lot of sloppy work. There have been a lot of things that were implemented and then retracted and rescinded. And so you're dealing with the aftermath of that where you're going to have to fix up things. You're going to have to repair things you're going to have to glance over things review things so i'm seeing a lot of revision a lot of review a lot of um you know um just just a lot of things that were done in a very hasty manner or put out prematurely and so you're going to have to fix them okay and the reason i say that is we have here the page of wands and this two of wands this is very fast swift almost careless energy okay so things that have been implemented, big projects that have been undertaken, I feel like you might be dealing with people who are kind of uh, trigger happy and they dash to the finish line, okay? So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of speed and momentum in this two of wands. And I'm also seeing um, almost like an ivory tower type of an approach where somebody has all the theoretical knowledge but they have no practical knowledge and so they don't really know how to apply theory to practice and so I feel like there is a huge steep learning curve associated with this person and they're not able to bridge that gap um, I'm also seeing a like a I'm seeing like a, a brick wall where somebody is just not getting something and so they're doing it probably in the wrong way or in the manner that you don't want to do um, that you didn't want them to do it in and so you're going to have to kind of like review their work and look at what's going on and and figure out you know how to help them or how to you know get them to overcome this blockage that's happening in their perception in their thought processes or in the methods in which they're doing something it sounds very dry I understand but just bear with me because I feel like this is like occupying a, the majority of your time and um, you guys never uh, you know back down from a challenge so I do feel like whatever work that you're doing even though it sounds you know very mundane I do feel like you're the best person in this position, honestly, because you're the only one that's capable of, uh, you know, the endurance, the patience to see this through, okay? Um, for those of you who are dealing with, like, paperwork, okay, I'm seeing a lot of um, notebooks, a lot of files, a lot of folders, and earlier I said I saw that magnifying glass. And that magnifying glass... Um, I'll talk about the folders and the notebooks, ledgers, money, finances, um, contracts, uh, legal paperwork, promises, like I'm hearing like promissory notes and, and promises that one party has made to another and they're contractually obligated to, um, to kind of like follow through with their end of the bargain. These things might have been discussed in the month of November all the details might have been kind of just slapped together, like slap things together, call it a day, here it is. And I feel like there are some mistakes. And unfortunately, you're going to really need to, you know, go through all the details with a magnifying glass. Have a really, really keen eye when it com comes to paperwork. And especially if it's money, finance related, okay? Make sure that... Um, nothing is slipping under the radar or or it's like um, um, I I, I want to say I don't feel like anybody's doing this deliberately I just feel like things were kind of slapped together and presented to you and it has a lot of uh, problems and a lot of holes in it and you're gonna have to be the one to identify these problems and patch things up okay um, 
So the magnifying glass. Funnily enough, when um, I saw that, I didn't think of it as, you know, looking at things through a magnifying glass and trying to figure out, you know, what it is and, or trying to get a bigger image of it. What I feel is um, this is a little bit more introspective. It's kind of telling me that December is sort of like the time where you're looking at your own life through a magnifying glass, okay? Trying to figure out, am I happy where I am? Am I happy with my work? Am I happy with my relationship partner? What have I um, done in the past that has led me to this present moment today, okay? So you could be very, very happy with uh, everything that you've worked very hard at, or you could be feeling a, a tinge of regret, remorse of things that you should have done, okay? Things you should have said, things you should have done, things you should have invested in, things you should have um, let go of, okay? So I do feel like it's a very, very introspective, you know, it's like um, examining our own motives, examining our past, examining how we got here, and examining, you know, uh, what do I need to change about myself? Okay, so I feel like looking at your own life through this magnifying glass, um, it's going to drag up some things. And I feel like that's why the cards, the first row is split off from the second row because I, I do feel like I might even be dealing with two groups of Capricorns who are going through this internal, you know, uh, magnification process where you're looking at at your life and you're trying to map out and plan out the next step and okay so so that's that's the first thing um, first of all I do sense there is a presence of a very um, spirited um, person in your life okay and um, for some of you this is like um, a relationship partner for others of you, this is somebody who could be in the work environment. And then for others, this could be a friend, a family member. So I feel like the energy can be romantic or very platonic. Um, the, the way this person is um, going through life, I do feel like you're looking at them in admiration. Okay. Um, the images that denotes this to me is the entire first row. Okay. This is somebody who's very, you know, like happy-go-lucky, okay? We have here the Five of Cups. The Five of Cups is about regrets. It's about situations where we wish we'd done something differently. Situations where we feel like a little bit discouraged, a little bit sad, a little bit like uh, mopey, okay? And so it's, um, you're dealing with somebody who is very, very spirited, they don't let the setbacks define them. They don't let the obstacles and the, um, you know, the, they don't let like setbacks, obstacles, or even problems deter them from wherever it is they're trying to go or whatever it is they're trying to get to. And because of their sense of optimism, they have essentially started out like this, page of wands, Lack of experience, okay? Somebody who's very optimistic, but they're lacking in practicality. They're lacking in, you know, a solid foundation to make things work. And you guys are very much about building foundations. And you don't take on things, like you don't bite off more than you can chew. You want to know the ins and out of something very, very thoroughly before you commit to something. And so this person, the way they live their life, it's like, let, let's just, you know, um, jump in first, ask questions later. Let's get our hands dirty and then figure it out from there. And this is somebody who's like, ah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And the way they live their life, their, their, their uh, demeanor, their tune, their attitude, it's just something that runs very, very counter to the calculated, to the methodical, to the, you know, organized way in which you have planned out and laid out your life. But against all odds, this person is uh, full of adventure, okay? So I feel like this is somebody 
who's very um, who who's always ready to to experience something new. This is somebody who is very very well traveled. They might be on the verge of traveling, okay, making some major moves in their lives, grabbing life by the horns, taking control of their life, taking control of their life. And making really, really great strides as well in their own life, okay? The, the, the object or the frog is sitting on this globe. And I feel like it basically means, you know, having total control. And from where they are, from these humble beginnings, they have achieved a lot of greatness. Six of Wands, success, okay? Basking in the sun. Um, it's This is a lizard-looking creature, okay? Um, they're usually cold-blooded or they're cold-blooded and they have to, you know, um, soak up the sun in order to, you know, warm up their body heat. Okay, so I definitely feel like this is a person who is basking in their glory, who's basking in the sun, who's getting a lot of recognition and then they're able to achieve this emperor status, okay? And you're starting to see that it's because they never let setbacks weigh them down. They never, um, you know, give up a fight. They never back away from a challenge. But the way that they approach things, it's like, I'm going to try it from this angle. If it doesn't work, I'm going to try it from this angle, okay? They, they don't just say, oh, it doesn't work. Let's scrap it. Let's try something else. So I feel like, you know, the process of not being able to, not giving up, not giving in and not letting, you know, not sitting around moping, wasting time, wasting energy and, and being mired in negative, negative thoughts. Um, I feel like you're dealing with somebody like, like this. You want to follow in their footsteps. You want to travel with them. You want to go wherever that they are going and you could be t contemplating as well, packing up your bags, traveling light and following this person, following their lead or physically following them because they know how to live and they know how to go from a space of like inexperience to be able to achieve emperor status. Okay, so I, I feel like you're um, in sheer admiration of a person and you wish that you could travel light and you wish that you could, you know, live out their lifestyle or live out their 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 mentality so that you you yourself could achieve, you know, whatever it is they're hoping to achieve. Um, I do feel as well, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning, there um, the month, the 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 activities, the images that I saw, they seem very, very mundane. They seem like everyday objects. And I feel as if some of you are craving like a next big adventure. You're craving the next big thing. You're craving for some more excitement or some change of scenery or something grandiose or something, you know, truly, um, it's like flipping the script. I'm seeing like something that would be a game changer, okay? You're you're looking for a big break. You're waiting for something to break through for you. You're waiting for your time to be in the sun, and you're waiting for 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 this. And so the first two weeks I feel of December is just about this waiting process, okay? And once again, you know, utilize that magnifying glass to really look at areas of your life that you want to either change up, you want to make a little bit more dynamic, you want to, you know, change the method in which you're doing things. It's going to be really helpful if you start to think about December and as we transition into, you know, 2020. 2020 is a number four year and number four years deal with structure. And it deals with like um, a lot of stability, okay? So whatever it is we're hoping to achieve, when we get that up and running, when we transition into 2020, it's going to be very stable. It's going to serve us. It's going to be very long lasting. It will withstand the test of time. And so make those plans right now, implement them in 2020. And I feel like you're going to be golden, okay? So what I do sense here in general is that um, you're waiting for this big break. You're waiting for, you know, um, life to, to kind of like take a, um, take a turn for the better or take a turn 
in an unexpected way so that you can break out of this rut, this sense of monotony, or this sense of things being so repetitious that you're doing the same things over and over again and you do want some new energy, you do want to change, okay? Um, it's understandable, okay? And, um, you know, birthday time is coming for you guys. By the way, happy birthday for all of you who are celebrating, especially the end of uh, December, but also... Um, celebrating in the month of January as well and so that, that's what I'm sensing here with the first uh, five cards and you have some really really amazing cards coming in in the bottom row and this is where I feel like the luck is turning around okay um, I have here the three of pentacles hard work okay this is like the busy bee the workers of the zodiac okay um, it also denotes to me a, a situation where all the bees in the colony have to work together in order to build the hive, okay? So there's a lot of buzz, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of like like the, the buzzword, um, a lot of um, movement, a lot of um, activity, a lot of like uh, new people potentially coming into the work environment. Um, some people might be leaving, but I see a lot of new people coming in, a lot of new faces, and a lot of um, like collaboration happening, okay? Um, in general, this is a card about, you know, dedication, hard work. Um, it's like letting go of the ego in order to collaborate with other people, in order to build something that doesn't just belong to you or belongs to them, but it belongs to the greater society. So I do feel there's an element here about, you know, scrapping the ego, working towards something that is larger than us, and then gaining a lot of traction and a lot of admiration and basking in the sun. So I do feel like this is the month where you're called upon to help others, to assist others, to, um, you know, I'm hearing to inspect the structural integrity of a situation, um, which brings me back to something that I saw last month. You were coming up with a prototype. You were creating something that has like multi-function, right? And so I feel like this is the month where that work is going to really pay off, okay? Okay you're kind of like presenting something I feel and I feel like a lot of people are going to look at you and they're just like I can't believe the Capricorn thought of something that amazing okay so I, I feel like you're getting positive reception and positive accolades but I do sense that you know you didn't do this on your own I feel like you asked a lot of people for their input you there might have been surveys you know uh, there might have been like crowdsourcing and things like that, you gather a lot of people's uh, input and to figure out the most efficient way to do something. And as a result of it, you're able to bring this forth into the world. So I feel like it's a community group effort, okay? But I definitely feel like you were the catalyst to allow this situation to happen. So the second half of uh, December, it's all about, you know, reaping the benefits bringing forth this situation so that everyone can benefit from it as a whole, okay? So um, enough with that. I do have something here that I really want to talk about. Um, I feel some of you might be in a, not all of you, and I feel like it might be about like 35, 40%. Um, there is some finances that you're waiting on, some financial payout, a bonus, a, um, a reimbursement. Um, I'm also feeling as well like um, I'm hearing like when is that check coming through? When is that royalty fee uh, coming through? So there's a situation that you're waiting on. You're waiting on some finances. Okay, waiting diligently. You're still doing other things. It's not like you're putting your, your life on hold. So I feel like finances is not like you're not in the red. You're not in danger of like not making the rent. But I do feel like there's a significant chunk of change that you're waiting on. And if you are signing contracts related to money, once again, you know, go through it very, very carefully. Read between the lines. Make sure you are aware of your contractual obligations so I feel like there's a turn for the better okay so this is uh, the wheel of fortune one of the best cards that we can get in the deck things turning the way that they should 
what I, and and with this bird what I'm seeing here is you know good karma coming back home to roost okay so whatever money finances or a situation you've been waiting on for a very very long time um, it's coming back full circle so you're not going to be waiting in this state anymore okay so I, I do see like a lot of good news coming through in that financial front and we have as well ace of cups okay so if we're shifting gears for a little bit and uh, we want to shift into you know more of your personal emotional uh, space what I do feel like is um, for those of you who have been sort of uh, in a relationship especially like a long-distance relationship with an, another person um, I feel like there's a bridge that's um, something is coming in to bridge that geographical divide between you and another person for those of you who have been estranged like not talking to or um, for whatever reason fallen out with another person there's some good news coming into the mix to kind of like bridge that divide and bridge that emotional gap between you and another person so I do feel this overwhelming sense of like people coming back into the, the picture, people might be traveling to see you, you might be traveling to see other people too. And it's something that's, you know, pre-planned, it's something you're looking, you're very much looking forward to. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of news, a lot of communication that will be had between you and another person. I have the card here of contact, okay? The judgment card is all about like uh, things being resurrected things coming back in, uh, communication, like contact, okay? And so it denotes to me like a lot of buzz, a lot of, um, a lot of like, um, a lot of communication back and forth between you and another person. And especially if you have been feeling estranged, neglected, or just feeling like uh, they're on the periphery of your life and that you might not matter to them. I do feel like there's a situation here that is uh, going to turn around or change for the better, okay? Um, let me see if there's anything else that is coming into the picture. Um, going back to what I saw earlier about, like, you know, that brick wall. Um the brick wall it's it's like um, I, I see it laid in in front of a person and so what I feel is for many of you for example um, you're very good at staying in one one place okay and climbing that corporate ladder you're very very trustworthy you're a really good worker you have amazing work ethics some of you uh, you're, um, it's like, you know, you're, you're higher, the higher ups will always depend on you. The last person to leave the office, for example, they depend that you will, you know, they, they count on you to turn off the lights, um, set the, um, set the alarm. Okay. So they, they, whenever things are, uh, in disarray, they kind of rely on you as the anchor. Okay. And so you might be getting a lot of accolades for the extra work that you're doing, going that extra mile in everything that you do, especially on the professional front, okay? And I feel like in the past, you might have always gone this extra mile and you feel a little bit burnt out. The work environment that you're in, they really appreciate your efforts, okay? And so I would say that with the caveat of, you know, it's, maybe it's time to ask for a salary increase for many of you. Because you have always um, gone that extra mile. You have always been the one to put out the fires. I'm seeing this as putting out the fires, okay? You have always been the one to, um, to get called in whenever there's something, you know, like a wild card um, to, to put out fires, to deal with some damage control, to set a situation right, like the mop-up, the cleanup crew, okay? That little broom right there. So what I'm seeing is your efforts, um, your your dependability is not going unnoticed, okay? And I feel like many of you, the employers, are really weary about, like, they're, they're anxious about losing you. And so it's time to ask for that, that bonus. It's time to ask for that salary increase. And then I'm also feeling as well that because you, you understand, you're getting, like, the recognition, right? 
And so you're very comfortable about staying in one place because you feel like, oh, everybody knows me. Everybody knows my contributions. And you're hesitant about looking at greener pastures. You're hesitant about changing location, changing jobs, starting over again in a new work environment because you're just like, well, you know, where I am right now, they know me and they know that I'm a good worker and they always congratulate me. And so in a way, I also feel like you're kind of like holding yourself back or even selling yourself short. If you can do that and get a lot of recognition in this current work environment, what's to stop you from getting the same type of recognition in the new work environment? So I feel like it's really important for you to know this about yourself and to stay in a place because you're still learning. If you're no longer learning, if you no longer feel like you're, I'm sorry, there's like a fruit fly. Um, I have a bottle of uh, sugar well, soda that's like on the table, so it's attracting the fruit flies. Sorry about that. So if you're in a uh, situation where you know you you put a lot of yourself into it, you also need to understand that wherever you go, you're gonna put in the same level of diligence. Um, effort and you know um, hard work and dedication so you're also going to be well received in a new work environment so I would say you know don't shy away from trying something new don't shy away from taking this big leap don't shy away and you know like I said you're dealing with somebody that you really look up to and you really admire and you want to live vicariously like through them and they're making some major strides and some major, major changes, possibly a geographical relocation. And you wish that you could be that, you know, free to do all of these things. And the reality is, you know, looking at your life under that microscope, nothing, there, there's like no physical barriers preventing you from doing this. And so you just have to do it. You just have to, you know, tell yourself that I need a change and I'm going to just do it no matter what because I feel like you're emulating the energies of somebody else who has made it, who has, um, who has you know, jumped into situations, asked questions later, and for whatever reason, they always land on their feet. It's because they have that sense of divine timing. They have, they're, they're just optimistic. And if things don't work out one way, they approach it from another angle and things always inevitably work out. And so I feel like, you know, let the fears kind of like cast aside the fears, the, um, the, the negative self-talk and just kind of let yourself make these giant leaps or even take these risks because I do sense a, a, a sense of boredom overcoming this spread where you want your life to be different. You want something else. You want something new. And I do sense, especially for those who are single, there's a great opportunity here to meet a person. And I do feel like this is not somebody who's going to be your usual type. Okay, this person is very, very spontaneous. And the energy that they show up as here is the Page of Wands. They're very passionate, very spirited. They're very vocal about their feelings. They're very emotionally expressive they will be very clear about what they like and what they don't like um, you can almost like you know see the the their emotions through their facial expressions through their micro expressions through their eyes through their body language this is someone who's not afraid to to show people how they feel okay and so they're kind of like a breath of fresh air in your life and I do sense as a result of that um, their energy is very spontaneous, whereas your energy is very Saturnian. It's a little bit like uh, structure and rigid, and I, I do sense in a way, forgive me, Capricorns, but in a way, it's it's like so much by the book, okay? So that magnifying glass is not so much about looking at other people under a microscope, looking at insects under a microscope. It's a magnifying glass for you to look at your life through a microscope and really examine the areas that you are content with and the areas that you want to change and you know figuring out some type of a game plan to get yourself where you need to be okay um, another thing I want to mention maybe this will help for many of you um, when 
okay, so we, we have the solar return, and I use this term a lot. And the solar return is basically when the sun is back in your sign, okay? It's usually your birthday time. The sun deals with professional achievements. It deals with recognition. It deals with like being in the spotlight and having a, like naturally just attracting a lot of luck and a lot of blessings into your life. And so your birthday time is a really, really good time for you to implement new projects, to start new things, to take that giant leap of faith because you're going to land on your feet. And um, because of all this luck and all this abundance that's coming into the picture, it's really, really a good time for you to, you know, break out of your shell and do something a little bit different. So if you're hoping to, you know, do something daring and land on your feet, the solar return time frame is a really good time for you to do that. And especially because we have shifted away from the Mercury retrograde that, um, you know, uh, culminated in the November time frame. We're moving into December, and we're on the tail end. We're like you know, uh, moving away from that. I feel like you have some major plans you want to undertake. It's kind of like bundled up, and you haven't really thoroughly unraveled it yet. You haven't really um, brought it forth for the world to see just yet. You're still keeping it under wraps. I feel. And I feel like, you know, um, there's some cleaning up that needs to be done. There's some dusting off or brushing off before you can bring it forth. And so this is a really good time to launch something, to bring something, to do something new and to, you know, make something happen for yourself that you've been kind of denying yourself. OK, go after that person, go launch that project. Um, change your location if need be because I feel like you have some amazing things that are coming in and I do sense you're still in the process of like grappling with the fact that oh it's too good to be true maybe I need to be a little bit careful maybe I need to keep it at arm's length but I don't feel like it's too good to be true I just feel like you know your birthday time is bringing about a lot of blessings a lot of uh, just just good positive energies, people, even situations, and you really need to get grab life by the horns, okay? You need you really need to, you know, start creating that life that you want, okay? So that is all that I have for you Capricorns. Um I did the Aquarius reading first. Usually I start with Capricorn um for all the signs. I, I usually start with Capricorn and go from there. Um because you guys are at the beginning of the year. And that's mainly why I start with you guys. But I just feel like Maybe I'll try to switch it out and do yours like, um, you know, maybe second or third in line, hopefully to get more messages. But I didn't get a lot more messages. I just got like pictures and of, of mundane objects. But they do have messages that I hope, you know, is helpful for you guys as you shift into December. Um, and I do feel in general that you're going to be claiming a lot of space as your own. You're going to be coming into your own and you're going to be attracting a lot of positive attention for this month, okay? Um, so I wish you all a very, very happy holiday season and happy birthday for those who are watching who have birthday the end of this month and also early January. I will talk to you guys soon. And for those who have still been emailing me about private readings, I do have a colleague, her name is Bridget, and I've included a link in the description box below. If you're interested in a reading and booking a reading with her, I highly recommend her services. She's amazing. Um, the link is down below. All right. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful December 2019. Take care.